If you've ever struggled to create your own covers in, you know, for your journals, planners, or other books, I think this will be pretty useful for you. I think one of the biggest things people struggle with when they're learning to design covers is balance. Um, that does, there's often a, does, you know, not you have this big page in front of you, like where are you going to put stuff? And there's also a desire to kind of fill up the page, which is not really necessary. So we do have a, a student of our Journal Creators University who asked for help with a cover. And I think it kind of highlights this. And we're going to try to maybe simplify it a little bit, create some more balance and really make it work for her. Um, but first, let's take a peek at some examples for inspiration. So the journal cover example we're going to look at is actually a kid's journal about cooking, like learning to cook. So I thought we could take a peek at Amazon and all I did was enter kid journal and you see a variety of designs here and stuff so one thing you know maybe make some random comments that will will help um you know all quite lovely right <laughs> and like looking at this one you know it's nice and the love mom and me is great but there's a lot of like stuff going on and I think it still works and you do see a lot of uh, covers with the floral there but I mean it would still work without all that stuff in the background you don't need to fill it up this one is probably a little more subtle example and it's got good balance it's got this in the middle there's like a subtitle here and and the author's name and stuff but there's a lot more you know like it's not white space because it's dark blue but like extra space just to draw attention to the title uh, this one as well um, you know uh, it's very simple it's mostly text a couple little things in there as well but there's still balance in here because I do think the example we look at there are a lot of little elements in it but there's not the balance this this whole border and then this sort of at the bottom this uh, you know black background it provides some sort of structure to the image and forgive me I'm not a professional designer I'm an amateur just like you guys so you know there might be proper phrases for the things I'm saying but I think you get the drift this one as well like there's a lot there there's the stars there's these toys and things but there this little element here helps create some balance this guy being a bigger thing in the middle also helps like you kind of want to have some kind of focal point in your design this one's cute too like it does have lots in the background but because it has this in the front it it works it's what draws your attention immediately here's another really simple one because journal covers can be really simple but I think you know this one is maybe perhaps a little too simple <laughs> that it doesn't really kind of draw the eye in and I I can't remember. I know that's also a play on a Diary of a Wimpy Kid and I, I think the covers of those books have more elements on them. So I wasn't sure if it was like a copy, but I don't think so. Like It seems like there should be some kind of image in it as well. Um, not that you can't do plain co journal covers, especially for adults. There's lots of journals that are just basically text and then a background and stuff like that, especially notebooks and stuff like that, right? But maybe for a child, you know, something a little bit different, but it's got 563 reviews and people maybe, <laughs> maybe seem to like it. <laughs> All right, so just a few thoughts to get started. And I hope what I'm saying about balance sort of makes sense. And let's go through an example that, you know, to create some balance in a cover. So here's the example from one of our students. And it's a great concept, right? It's a journal for kids to like really get into the love of cooking and exploring stuff like that. But as you can see that I think on this, there isn't a lot of balance. This sign perhaps seems a little bit small. There is, you know, a lot going on here, different things. And I think that was probably an urge to fill up the space. Um, I love the color, the background color. It's like one of my favorites. <laughs> so I do love that. But then I thought, so I cleaned it up a little, not that this is the finished product, but I, I do think this sign is pretty small. There's like not a focal point on here, but I'm not sure this 
is it that you do want to have so much focus here unless you move the title to here because I think a journal for a kid chef is the most important thing we want to pay attention to. I also do think that the background of this like the the lines behind there it sort of distracts from the writing and that's probably not really that big of a deal but if we're trying to make it amazing maybe <laughs> that we're gonna we're gonna think about that. Um, and let's talk about the fonts just a little bit before we move on. And so before we go on too, I do want to stress like that design is sort of a personal thing and you will have people look at different designs and love them and other people will hate them and other people who claim to know what good design is will be wrong about how it's perceived. So everything I'm saying is just, you know, it's based on opinion and what I really hope is that I just show you some tricks and things to work on. So so um, if you're going to like, so the font here could, you know, you can create effects on fonts in case you're not aware. Um, and then you can adjust them. That's a little bit on a thinner font like that. That's probably too much. You can, you can uh, play with that. There's different, different things that you can do with it. Right. But one thing I like is if you feel like fonts are hard to pick <laughs> and if you go to text and then you see down here below there's lots of font combinations and they're sort of they're made for you already they have different element uh, effects added to them so this is like all the same font but they made these two items they are um, not solid I don't think you want to necessarily do that on a cover like this on a back colored background but it's just an example and a lot of them sort of have like a sort of a subtitle font selected as well. So it works pretty good. Um, let's try, I think that's kind of thin, right? But it has, gives kind of a kid look. However, I don't know the ages for the kids. Maybe it's too childlike, but let's go with something like this just to show you. And actually I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the page so and remove some of this stuff in the background just so that we can work and have a clear space so you could see there's like there is it already adds some balance so um, you could get journal for a kid chef I'm not gonna do uh, kids love cooking okay so now it's probably love well, would move it over like this and oh sorry I moved it wider because I don't want that to go on two lines so I'm gonna ungroup these two things so that we can move them properly and something like this and what she's got here I kind of I think that's kind of nifty actually what was done here it's like hanging there but I'm gonna be wild and kind of whoops sorry it's like a little element here that require care care that the shadow but if we're gonna like change it up a little bit and instead of you know trying to fit a bunch of food or things in there there's lots of actually when I search for kids chef uh, earlier there was lots of images um, some of these are pro images so if you have a pro canva account you can use those because i kind of like this dude but maybe because he appears first he might appear in other things you can also switch here or there and put free if or if, if you ever need to i guess if you have a free account you don't have to do that but there's lots of uh, great free images here um you know like he's he's kind of goofy looking but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to pick one. <laughs> okay, no, see, you know what? I mean, you're going to see I'm going to be picky. <laughs> so I also, again, I don't know what age group. I'm going to go back and I'm going to just to satisfy myself. I'm going to go here because I like this one. And the reason I like this one is because it has some balance here as well so it could be done at the bottom because I think if you put it up like this it's like she's mid 
she's in the middle of the things. But you could add some element below where it would make sense for her to be there. So I am going to just put this here. And I do think we, this font color maybe would be better as something different, but I'm not sure. Or maybe some more, um, I think white looks better actually. And then I don't know, maybe this, I'm not sure that my idea is going to be good. But here, the photo colors, you can see the colors in the photo. So you could try out to kind of match the colors in that. And it's very simple, but it also seems very clear, right? And so we go from, from here to like, I think it's immediately apparent what it is. So just a suggestion. And obviously, I'm excited to see what Carolyn does end up coming up with because she's got a great product. And I hope you found those tips a little bit helpful. At the time of creating this video, our Journal Creators University is actually closed to new students because we're focused on a 30-day challenge and guiding them through all the training. As you can see, we've got a lot going on for people and helping them create their journals, put them up for sale, and develop their marketing skills. But it will open up again uh, probably in the next year. But if you would like to start digging into some more marketing uh, courses, we do actually have a growing library of free classes at ekithubuniversity.com. So come on by and register for one and it would be great to work with you.